Okay, hope uh, I'm uh, audible and my screen is visible. Okay. So we'll start with today's lecture. In the previous lecture, what did we do? We went through uh, the syllabus, right? We saw what are the topics that has to be covered. And then we discussed why we have to study this subject, right? And then we saw that we study how to design a given problem using different machines. So there, for that, we saw that there are problems which are solvable and which are unsolvable. I hope uh, uh, you understood what is solvable and what is unsolvable problem. Okay, so we'll move on to our next uh, topic. Okay, that is <coughs> the prerequisite in your uh, subject. Mm, set, logic, function, and relation. Uh, students, I, I hope you people know uh, what exactly is this. Have you studied this? Have you come across what is set? Uh, operations on set. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so then what I'll do is I'll just brush up whatever you have learned. Okay. I'll not go in depth. I hope everyone know about set, uh, set operations and all. So keeping that in mind, I'll not go in depth or in detail. I'll just go through, okay, whatever you have learned, okay? If you feel that we are, anything is new, you can tell me, I'll repeat that, okay? Fine. So coming to the definition of set. What is set? Set is representation of a collection of objects, right? It is collection of objects with same property or common property. Set cannot have uh, the elements which are of different property. Like I cannot have a uh, book, pencil, sky, something like that, building and all, right? It should be of same property. And uh, the representation of element to the set A belongs to capital A. Capital A is our set and small letter A is element, right? And how we represent does not belong with a slash over belongs to, okay? So a set is usually represented by capital letter and element of the set by small letter, okay? These are the things that you should remember so that we can use this, the same thing in our uh, subject, okay? So how to represent uh, a set? There are three ways. One is statement form, that is English form. Next is roster form. That is uh, what exactly the element is or give the definition, actual definition of the set. That is set builder form. We'll see that what it is. Statement form, just write it in a English statement, the set of all ovals in English. That's all. Okay, that is statement form. What is roster form? Write the members of the um, set. That is, if uh, I want to represent a set of uh, even numbers between 1 to 10, then what I'll write, it is 2, 4, 6, 8. We actually list the members. That is known as roster form. What is set builder form? C. If I want to represent uh, the same thing, for example, the set of all even numbers between 1 to 10, how I'll write E equals X such that X lies between 1 to 10. Okay. See, here is another example to give set builder for N is equal to X. Right. N is set of all X such that X is positive integers between 10 to 20. Uh, here I have written as X is positive integer between 10 to 20. I can also write 10 less, um, uh, sorry, 10, yeah, less or equal, uh, less or equal to x, less or equal to 20. I'll write it so that it is more clear. x 
less sorry equal to that is it lies between 10 to 20 i can write even this way this is another representation okay instead of this whole thing this whole thing i can write even this okay this is known as set builder form there are three ways of representation of a set okay i hope this is uh, clear you remember this so next is some uh, there are different sets like empty set and equal sets empty set that is there is no there are no elements in the set right a set with no elements how it is represented with black braces or five okay so if you want an example you can uh, see here uh, a is a set of all elements x where x is an integer which is a perfect cube and lies between 2 and 7 perfect cube and lies between 2 and 7 so if you see 2 to 7 2 3 4 5 6 7 you don't have uh, somebody is disturbing please mute your mic thank you if you see numbers between 2 to 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So here we don't have any numbers which is a perfect cube. So it is a empty set or a null set. Okay. Coming to equal. Equal set. Sets with equal elements. Equal set means sets with equal elements. See here, is set A and B equal? Yes, they are equal. Because they have same element, 5, 6, 7. Maybe the number of uh, times it is repeated is more. But it has same element, 5, 6 and 7. Okay? But this set is not equivalent set. What do you mean by equivalent set? Equivalent set means even... Uh, the element should be same, that is true, but it also should be in the same order and the number of elements in both the sets should be same. I hope you got the difference between equal set and equivalent set. Okay, uh, if the equivalent sets are always equal, we have to remember that equivalent sets are always equal sets, but all equal sets are not equivalent sets. I hope you are getting this, students, because since this is just a brush up, I'm going a bit fast, okay, so that we can concentrate more on actually uh, the subject, okay? So I'm not going it in depth, I'm just brushing it up. Okay, next, what are the basic operations? Offset, intersection, union, difference, and complement. I think you people know what is intersection. Common elements between set A and set B. What is union? All the elements of A and B together. Right? What is difference? The elements which are in A but not in B. Complement? All the elements which are not in A. Okay? So these are basic operations. Coming to relations and functions. What do you mean by relations and functions? Relations and functions are set operations, again, okay, that help to trace the relationship between the elements of two or more sets or between the same set. It may be between A and A or it may be between A and B, okay? That is relations and functions. Uh, I think you know what is Cartesian product. You take one element from one set and you map it with the other element of the other set. Okay. So if I say X, Cartesian product, uh, product of X and Y, it will be 1 with 4, 1 with 7, 3 with 4, 3 with 7. Okay. All the elements of X map to all the elements of y. You have to remember one thing here in Cartesian product is 
Cartesian product of x and y is not same as y and x. Okay, so if I, I want Cartesian product of y and x, can you help me out? What will be Cartesian product of y and x? Students, help me. Four one, four one. Yes, four one. Yes, right. Then seven three. Seven three. Yes. Then. Then. Four three. Yes, Harshal. Good. Four, seven one and and one seven huh one seven no dear it is seven one seven one okay yes very good wonderful very good students i hope you got this right okay so if we see uh x cartesian product of x and y is not same as y and x okay it is completely different Okay. Next, what is relation? Okay, uh, if A and B are two I mean, non-empty sets, okay, and uh, we have Cartesian product of A and B, we can define a set R. Okay, that defines a relation from A to B. And every relation from A to B is subset of Cartesian product of A cross B. What is Cartesian product? Every element of one set is mapped to every element of the second set. Okay, but if we come to relation, relation yeah, uh, here, it is subset, subset of the Cartesian product. Okay, that is R is subset. I, ho I hope you people know this. Okay, R is subset of Cartesian product of A and B. Okay, and how we write it? We write it as A comma B belong to R. That is element uh, small A. That is element A belongs to set A. Element B belongs to set B. Okay, so if this is the case, then what we say? We say that element A is related to element B. How we write it as? We represent it as A, R, B. Okay. So types of relations. If you remember, we have uh, mainly three types. Okay. We have many, but mainly we usually see three basic three types. Reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Okay. What is reflexive relation? Reflexive relation is... Uh, every element of A is related to itself. Okay, if you see the example here, A equals 1, 2, 3. Okay, and R is subset of A cross A. Okay, A cross A. That is Cartesian product of A with A itself. Okay, so what is R? R is, they have given R is 1, 1. 1 comma 3. Okay, if you see this, is this reflexive? What is reflexive? Every element of A should be related to itself. So is this reflexive? Students, is this reflexive? Is the set no. R is reflexive? Why it is not reflexive? Yes, Yash, very good. Yashasri, yes. Sharvari, it is. No, it is not reflexive. Very good. Yes. But why it is not reflexive? Because every element is not related to itself. Very good. See, here, one is related to one. Right? But we have two and three also. They are not related to itself. Yes, Srishti. Right. So what we have to, if I want to make R reflexive, what are the elements that I have to add? 
what are the elements uh, or what are the relations that I have to add. This will be as it is. I have to add few more. What are those that I have to add to make R reflexive? One comma two. The um, what is that? It should be related to itself. Students, please don't confuse. It should be related to itself. That is, one is related to one itself. Okay, so two should be related to two. I think you people got a bit confused. It is not to other element. One is not related to other elements of A. It is one related to one, two related to two, three related to three. I hope this you got this, people. Okay, so this what we have to add two, two, and three, three is missing in this, right? So we have added this and we made our reflex. Okay, so this is about reflexive. The second is symmetric relation. If, okay, uh, listen care carefully. If A is related to B, if A is related to B, B should be related to A. If A is related to B, B should be related to A. Okay, coming to the same example again. Is this uh, symmetric? Is this symmetric? Yes. So to make it symmetric, what has to be added? To make this symmetric, what has to be added? If A is related to B, B should be related to A. So what has to be added? Yes, Harshal. Very good. 3, comma, 1 has to be added. See, 1 is related to 3. So, 3 should be related to 1. So, 3 is related to 1. 1 is related to 1 and 1 is related to 1. That is itself, right? So, we need, uh, need not add anything for this relation. But for this relation, we need to add 3, 1. So, now this is symmetric. Okay? Hope you are getting students. Okay? So, next. Transitive relation. What is transitive relation? Again, if A is related to B and if B is related to C, if this is true, if this is true, A is related to B and this B is related to some C, then A should be related to C. Okay? So, on this note, let's see. I have given here four examples. Tell me which is transitive and which is not transitive. And if there is no transitivity, what should be added to make it transitive? R3, R4 are transitive. R4 is transitive. R4 is transitive. Okay. 2 comma 3. Uh, Rushikesh, I did not get. What is 2 comma 3? R4 is transitive. 3, 2 added in R1. Uh, 2 comma 3 to R1. Very good students uh, that you are uh, at least trying. I'm really impressed. In R1. Okay, in R1 you want to add it. Okay. Any other answers? Okay, students. Again, we'll come back to the definition. Okay, what it says, if A is related to B, if A is related to B, and if, okay, Make it clear with the definition. If A is related to B and if B is related to C, then 
A should be related to C. Okay, coming to this R1. One is related to two. Is two related to something? No. One is related to three. Is three related to something? No. So this is transitive. No. Are you getting? Students, are you getting this? Ma'am, can you repeat once again? See here, one is related to two. Is two related to something? No. Okay. So here, only this is true. When this is not true, we'll not go to this, right? Okay. Coming to this, one is related to three. Is three related to something? No. So this is transitive. Are you understanding, students? Are you understanding? Okay. So obviously R2 and R3 is transitive because there is no question of uh, B related to C anywhere. Right? Coming to R4 now. Tell me about R4 now. Is this transitive? Parvati says it is transitive. Janvi says it is transitive. Everyone says it is transitive. I say it is not transitive. Now tell me why it is not transitive. I say it is not transitive. Now prove me wrong then. If you say that it is transitive, then prove me wrong. Or tell me there why is it is. Either. Yeah, yeah. Ma'am, C, C is not there. What is not there? Ma'am, uh... Uh, a is equal to 1, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, right? Huh. Then if uh, uh, a, a is related to B, mm -hmm. then B, related, B should be related to C, but hmm. uh, B, is, B is related to A. Directly it is shown there. Two, hey, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's not that way, dear. It is not uh, A, B, C. Matlab ye, this is A, this is B, this is C. Aisa nahi hai. Whatever element is there, that is named as this is A, B. This may be B, C if it is related. It may be anything. B may be anything. C may be anything. It may be same A itself also. Okay. Are you getting? Yes, ma'am. Huh? It is not that way. Okay. One comma is not present. Uh, Harshal, this is one comma two. Right, Bacha? This is one comma two. Yes. Three is not present. No, it is not because of three. Okay, fine. Now tell me. It is not because of 3. We don't want 3 because it is not related at all in this uh, R4. Ma'am, then 2 comma 2 will be na? Yes, yes. Why? Ma'am, uh, 2 comma 1 is and 1 comma 2 is Yes, very good. Very good. Who is this? Ma'am, Karte Dande. Okay, good. Very good. See here. If I consider this A and this is B, B is related to C, right? 2 is related to 1 and 1 is related to 2 and 2 comma 2 does not exist in this. So if we add 2 comma 2 in this, it is transitive. Is this okay? Students, did you get this? Is there any confusion? Students, let me know if you have any confusion in this. Okay, you have to uh, go through each and every element and every relation. Okay, it's not that you have to go to this order. Okay, it can be here too. 1 comma 3 can be here. And here 3 comma 1 can be here. Then you have to think whether we have 1 comma 1. Okay, so that you have to keep in mind. Fine, I hope this is clear. So... R1, R2, R3 are already transitive. R4 is not transitive because we don't have 2, 2. Okay. If we add 2, 2, then it becomes transitive. Okay. So this is about relation and coming to equivalence relation. If all these three, what is that? Reflexive, symmetric, transitive. All three are there in a given set, then it is 
equals okay see a relation r on a set a is said to be equivalence relation on a if and only if it is reflexive it is symmetric and it is transitive okay to summarize on a relation what is a reflexive relation a should be related to itself for all a belongs to the set okay what is symmetric symmetric is if a is related to b then there should exist b related to a okay next transitive relation what is transitive relation if a is related to b and if b is related to c then there should exist a related to c okay and what is equivalence relation all the relations that is reflexive if the given set is also reflexive also symmetric and also transitive then at the same time then it is known as equivalence relation okay this is about relation okay so coming to a small example we'll quickly go through and we'll, then we'll move on to the next one is given r is ref, uh, reflexive symmetric and transitive which one it is or it is equivalence uh, i cannot hear you student hello it is it is transitive okay uh, what about reflexive and uh, symmetric it is not uh, the first one okay i am talking on the first one it is not uh, reflexive it is not uh, symmetric it is equivalence akash says it is equivalence do you agree students others Do people agree on this? Whether it is equivalence? Is it reflexive? I have here one and two. One is related to one. Two is related to two. So it is reflexive, right? What about symmetry? One is related to one. Two is okay. Fine. One is related to two, and two is related to one. Yes, it is symmetric. As you people already told that it is transitive. So it is. equivalence right very good fine i think you understood this example coming to the second one whether it is reflexive whether it is symmetric whether it is transitive which one is second one it is symmetric who just says that it is symmetric others others ah uh, shreha also says that it is symmetric so sonu says symmetric and transitive transitive parvati says transitive and symmetric harshal says transitive okay janvi says transitive devesh says both saurav says transitive raj says both process is transitive okay uh students transitive is correct tabish says both okay so what is uh, symmetric symmetric when a is related to b b should be related to one right one is related to one so and one is related to two so one is related to two that is transitive right Two is related to two. Two is related to one. Two is related to one. Fine, even that is right. Okay. One is related to three, and one is two comma three is absent. Two comma three is absent. 
Yes, Karthik, 2,3 is absent. Yeah, so it is not transitive also, right? 2 is related to 1 and 1 is related to 3. 2 is related to 1 and 1 is related to 3. And 2 is not related to 3. So it is not transitive, right? It is not reflexive because 3 is not related to 3, right? So it is not reflexive. Coming to symmetric, what is uh, not present to um, prove that it is not symmetric? What is not present? 3 comma 3 is for reflexive bacha. 3 comma 1. Yes, very good. See here, 1 is related to 3 and B should be related to A, right? 3, 1 should also be present. So, this example doesn't have any of the relation. Neither reflexive, nor symmetric, nor transit. Okay? So, I hope you got the relation. Right, right, January. Yes. Okay. So we'll move on to the function. I'm not going into depth in this. I'll just uh, give a definition of a function and move on. Okay. A function, what is a function? A function assigns to each of the element of the set exactly one element of a related set. Okay. If A and B are two sets A and A is related to B, how it is related? Okay, what we have to define a function so that element of A is related to exactly one element of B. Okay, so here we have defined a function f of n is equal to n square. Okay, if I take 2, so how it should be related to B? It should be n square. Which element of B is related to 2? It is 4. How to find that? f of 2 is equal to n square. 2 is my n, right? 2 is my n. So, here I have 2 dalna hai. 2 square is 4. Okay? So, this 2 is related to 4 of b. Exactly one element of b. Okay? So, what is uh, 3? f of 3, it is 9. What is f of 5? What is f of 5? 25. Yes. Okay. Square of the element. Okay. This is how it is defined. There are different functions. 1 to function, on to function and all. We will not go into that in depth. Okay. So, this is about the prerequisite that was uh, given in our syllabus. Okay. I hope you got this. What is set? What is function? What is relation? I hope you understood. I just brushed it up very quickly because we don't require much of this in our syllabus. Okay. But maybe that uh, since it is given in prerequisite, they may ask one or one uh, five marks question. And there you shouldn't say that it is out of syllabus. So I just brushed it up that this is what is required. Okay, we'll not make very, um, very much use of this in our syllabus. I hope you got this, students. Is there any doubt in this? Is there any doubt? Okay, so we'll move on to our next then. Okay, so we'll move on to the next topic. Okay. Uh, introduction to your basic machines before going to the machines that are in your syllabus okay we'll be starting with finite automata before moving to finite automata that is the base uh, the first machine that we'll be learning in the subject we have to know what is this machine and what is the basic of this machines okay uh, before starting with the students, I want to just uh, tell you one thing that uh, uh, in previous syllabus, uh, I think I have already told you, in previous syllabus, we had tutorial for this subject. Okay, what we did is we learned the uh, one question or maximum two uh, questions in during the lecture and we solved three to four uh, sums in the tutorial. It was three plus one. Okay, but now 
we don't have any tutorial we have only three lectures and it is very difficult to complete the syllabus in three lectures and uh, to take more examples will be very difficult for me so what we'll do is we'll solve two maximum three examples in the lecture and i'll give you i'll provide you more questions you have to solve it yourself is that okay is that okay students okay and if you have any doubt you can always approach me for any doubt okay and if you feel that you want to um, approach me one to one i am always available 15 minutes before the class okay in your uh, online class you can also come during that period or even after the lecture you can uh, we can have a talk and clear your doubt okay so i will be available for half an hour that is 15 minutes after your lecture and 15 minutes before your lecture you can always approach me during that time okay so this will be my approach that is i'll be teaching you two maximum i think three i can take uh three of the examples in the lecture all rest of the examples i'll give you as homework you have to solve it you have to because students i can't come to you and ask right it is your duty that you solve it if you don't understand it you can always come to me okay fine and even if you want to come to college and ask clear your doubt you can come to me i am available in college on tuesdays usually okay so before coming you can ping me that whether you can ask me the timing and all and i'll tell you if you can okay if you want to that's all otherwise i am available online as i said before uh, the lecture 15 minutes before the lecture and after the lecture okay so we'll start with this mm. so as i said our syllabus starts with finite automata okay before going to finite automata we need to know what is basic machine what is this basic machine the first machine which comes to mind is the basic machine which just takes the input and gives the output okay as in your example as and gate or gate it takes two input and gives one output it just uh, how this works it takes the input it go through the lookup table it says acha 0 0 hai to output 0 hona chahiye okay give 0 here okay if you give 0 1 it will go to the lookup table just check 0 1 ka output kya hai 0 hai acha 0 de do okay so there is no processing in basic machine in basic machine there is no processing it is just a basic we have a table okay it gives 0 0 output 0 जीरो वन अच्छा दे दो वन जीरो है तो जीरो दे दो वन वन है तो वन दे दो दिस इज हाउ दिस एंड गेट इज डिजाइन कमिंग टू आर गेट ओके सो वॉट इट से इफ यू गिव जीरो वन इट से इट विल गो टू द टेबल इट विल चेक जीरो वन है अच्छा तो वन देना है आउटपुट इज वन ओके देर इज नो प्रोसेसिंग इट इज फिक्स जीरो वन है तो वन ही है वन जीरो है तो वन ही है okay there is no processing at all in basic machine this is about basic machine it has input i okay input is represented with i in basic machine and output is represented with o okay so before going to the next machine we have to uh, know some terminologies okay we'll see those terminologies symbol what is a symbol symbol is smallest building block which can be any alphabet any letter any symbols that is any special characters or any pictures also okay which is used in your language which is used in your language okay fortran has its own language uh, symbols or uh, c programming has its own symbols java has own symbols 
okay next is alphabets alphabets are set of symbols it is set of symbols okay if you say alphabet it is subset of symbols alphabets are set of symbols which are always finite okay if i say binary digit so it is 0 comma 1 okay and alphabets are represented using summation you have to remember this because throughout the syllabus throughout automata theory we are using summation symbol for alphabets okay so if i say uh, decimal digits so it is 0 to 1 okay if i say first three characters of uh, english alphabet it is a comma b comma c or capital alphabets of english so it is a b c to z so this is alphabet okay next coming to string string what is string is a sequence of uh, symbols from some alphabet okay whatever we say okay for example if i want a string in binary digit i can have 010 zero, zero. i can have 1100 zero, zero. it is combination of this alphabet okay so that is string okay empty string is represented with epsilon you have to remember even this empty string is the string with zero occurrence of symbols represented as epsilon okay that is uh, something like e it is not e it is epsilon okay then length of the string is denoted with absolute of w that is with two uh, lines between two lines i think you people know this right okay uh, if i want like number of strings that that is of length two that can be generated over alphabet a comma b what are the uh, strings what are the strings that can be generated it is there is no space here i'm sorry for that what what are the strings of length two that can be generated using alphabet a comma b so it will be a a a b b a b b length of each string is two and number of strings in this is four right right rehan i hope you understood this terminology students right is this clear with symbol alphabet and string string length okay and number of strings okay. next coming to language a language is a set of strings okay chosen from this this is your what is this? This is your uh, uh, all the strings, right? Of length two generated by a comma b, okay? And this is your alphabet of the string. What is language? Language is a set of string, okay? Or I can say it is subset of your all the elements that can be generated. If I say uh, my uh, alphabets of the language is a comma b then what is a language language can be any set any subset that can be generated using a comma b it can be a b it can be a b a b it can be b a b a something like that okay so as i said just now if my language has alphabet a comma b then what is uh summation zero it is set of all strings over summation of length zero that is epsilon we have seen length zero is epsilon what is of length one it is a comma b just a just b okay fine and how the language is represented using flower bracket okay summation two set of all strings over summation of length two Length 2, we have just now saw A, 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 B, B, A, B, B. If I want summation 3, that is of length 3, then what I can have here? 
what I can have here. Students quickly help me out. A, 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 right? B, B, B. Yes, A, A, B. A, B, B. Yes. B, A, A, right? A, B, A, right? A, 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 B. A, B, B, A, B, B. And so on, I think I'll have nine, okay? So I'll stop it here. Okay, all the elements of length three. Okay, right students, I, uh, you just write it down. Okay, so all the elements with three. Um, Rayan, I think we'll have nine, right? You have written only six. Okay, we'll have nine, three into three, nine, okay? Uh, so that is with length three. Similarly, I can have with length four, length five, length six. It is infinite, right? I can say that the strings generated by this just two elements is infinite. I can have string length hundred. I can have string length thousand. Anything. Are you getting right? So what is universal set using this a comma b? will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Okay, so if I make a union of this, it will be an infinite language. Okay, so how, what is this actually? What is this summation star? It is all the strings, okay? Just listen, it is all the strings generated by alphabet A comma B. Maybe of any length. That is your summation star. But the language should have only two alphabet. That is A, that is A or B. Okay, A repeated hundred times, B repeated hundred times, A ten times, B ninety times, anything, anything. Right? All the combinations of A and B of any length. That is the language generated by a comma b that is infinite language okay your summation star is infinite okay fine is these terminologies clear students symbol alphabet string and language okay if these terminolog no, terminologies are clear we'll move on to the next one okay these terminologies are used throughout our lecture, okay? Throughout finite automata, we'll be using this. Throughout automata theory, we'll be using this, okay? Okay, so moving to the next thing, uh, that is machine, okay? Any machine, any machine, okay? Any machine has input tape. Any machine consists of input tape, okay and a finite control and a temporary storage depending on the machine okay this differs the input tape is as it is the finite control differs the processing differs and the temporary storage where it is stored also differs okay so this is generic machine it is not related to only one machine a general machine what it has it has an input tape where the input are uh, given or the input are typed then that input tape is uh, read into finite control okay and it is uh, if required there is some storage depending on the machine and after processing that is after giving the uh, uh, designing we have some algorithm right that according to that algorithm the output is given okay one most important thing you have to remember here is uh, the elements of each string okay what we give the input we give input as a string we give 
input as a string. I hope I'm getting, you people are getting me. Okay, usually in a machine, we give a string. Okay, it takes the string as the input. Okay, and those strings are stored in this input tape. Okay, one string at a time. The machine can take one string at a time. And each alphabet of the string is stored in, the, in this array. That is, for example, if I give the string as A, B, C, D. A is stored here, B is stored here, C is stored here, and D is stored here. Okay, and the machine reads only one alphabet at a time. I'm repeating this. The machine can read any machine. Okay, students, what, whichever machine we are going to look into, every machine, they read one alphabet at a time. If I say I have given a string A, B, C, D, then it reads A first, which is stored here. Then it will move on to the next one, reads B, then it will move to the next one, reads C, then it will move to the next one and read D. It will read A, it will go to finite control. If required, storage required, whatever, depending on the machine, it takes that and then gives the output. And then again, it goes to B, the next one. Ye ho gaya, done. Then it goes to B, it takes B does the processing uh, with uh, the storage if required and gives the output. Then read C, gives the output. Then read D, gives the output. This is how the generic machine work. All the machines work. Okay, only change will be in the algorithm and the temporary storage depending on the machine. Is this basic clear students till now whatever I have taught you is this clear okay you have to remember this you have to remember this that only one element or only one alphabet is read at a given time by the machine okay what input is given input is given as a string string matlab it can have five elements it can the length of the string may be 10 whatever okay and that is stored here as one alphabet in each. Okay, input tape, matlab, I think you people know this, right? It is just an like array type and each one, each one of this has only one alphabet stored. Okay, so I may give A, B, A, B. So how it is stored? A, B, A, B. Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, fine. So next machine that you should know is finite state machine. This is not in your syllabus, but you should know before going to the machine. Okay, finite state machine. What is finite state machine? Finite state machine is a calculation model that can be executed with the help of hardware, otherwise software. Okay. So this is usually used in creating sequential logic. Uh, FSM finite state machine has uh, states. Okay, uh, it takes the input and changes the state according to the input and the current state. We'll see that a bit later. Okay, uh, FSM is uh, used in the field of mathematics, um, in games, in artificial intelligence and all. Okay, so as I said, in a system where specific inputs can cause specific changes, there we use FSM. Okay, so um, next I'll take a simple example. We are well aware of uh, our fan switch, or I can say not fan, I'll take switch. Okay, not fan, I'll take switch. Okay, in switch, there are two states of a switch. What is state? It is uh, the position, I can say, right? It is position of the switch. The switch may be on or off. That is the only two uh, state that the switch can be, right? 
it can be either off or it can be on okay if the switch is on and if i push the button it will turn to off okay and if it is in the off state if i push it will be in the it will be in the on state okay similarly i can take another example of a uh, regulator of a fan what are the states of a regulator what are the states of the regulator regulator can be 0 1 2 3 4 or 5 right so regulator state can be 0 to 5 okay as here the uh, one most uh, thing student this is known as state okay this is known as state and this is known as input okay push the action or the uh, thing it reads and changes the state the machine reads and changes the state this is known as input okay what may be the input for the regulator what may be the input for the regulator to change the state it should be rotated clockwise or it should be rotated anti clockwise do you agree students do you agree with this to change the state of the regulator state means the position i am repeating this state means position okay if i want to change the state then i have to rotate it in clockwise direction or in anti clockwise direction right so if the regulator is in one and i turn or uh, uh, my input is clockwise then what state it will take if my regulator is in state 1 state 1 and if i give the input clockwise it will be 2 very good okay and if the regulator is in 5 and i give the input anti clockwise then it is 4 yes i hope you understood the state of a machine okay in which state it is okay so uh, if you see see this the next state depends on the present state and the input do you agree with me what i said the next state of a machine the next state of a machine depends on the input and the current state right right if i say the state is at 6 and the input so not 6 sorry uh 5 uh, and the uh, input is anti clockwise then you said it is 4 right so what is it when it came to 4 it it depends on the input that is anti clockwise and also since it is it, the state was 5 right so the output or the next state depends on the current state and the input okay say so the next simple example that we can take is your video game i think you people have played this game right okay so if i say the character has only three state uh, the uh, i think this uh, game is mario i think okay stand jump or run it has three states right okay it is if the character is standing and you do nothing so it will be in standing state itself but if you press a it will jump and if you press up it will run okay so this is another uh, example simple example that you people easily understand right this is the state uh, i just want to explain what is state what is input okay this is current state if i am standing if the character is standing and if you press up it will be running and what is my state now what is current state now it is running okay 
so if my current state is running and i uh, press up it will be running 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 and if i press a then it will jump so what is my current state current state is jump now okay once i am in current state and something is pressed that will be my current state the next state becomes my current state now right okay i hope you are understanding what is current state what is input and what is next state okay if you see if i am in jump state that is the character i'm sorry if the character is in jump state and if you press nothing it will stand right and if the character is in jump state and if you press up it will be in running state okay so these are simple examples that uh, i have taken to make you explain what is state what is in